Hi guys, glad you're back with us. I want to continue on from my first video on immigration where I was discussing the differences in the requirements to obtain the first step, which is your residency visa. I want to continue on. I promised on the last video and I'd be forwarding you a bit of information and what I had uh, went back to June 1st, 2012 and I made mention I'm going to send it up to uh, one of the law firms we do a lot of business with just to make sure it was still uh, current. And uh, lo and behold it was, but then I realized we're working on it, but we're going to expand a lot more into a Spanish audience, but for the time being uh, a high majority of our subscribers are English speaking. So I asked them if they'd do me a favor and send it out to me translated in English, if they'd have their translator doing it. So um, it's only two and a half pages, but rather than waste a bunch of time going through it, uh, it's fairly self-explanatory. Like I say, remember, the requirements change. The laws, not so much uh, since 2012. And here I am, February 2018, making this video, so that's for quite some time. Uh, anyway, so it's going to be linked. The PDF is going to be linked below this video, and uh, let's continue on. Um, I, I want to start addressing the issue, first and foremost, of why I feel everybody on this planet needs at least two passports. Kind of look at it in terms of your sovereignty, in terms of if something happens in the country that you're currently residing in, any plan B that takes into account both a, a, a offensive and a defensive type strategy to it, and it should be part of both if it's well balanced, um, is going to have an, extra, an exit strategy and that, that often includes a second residency or more importantly a second passport. So that's, I'm just going to leave that as it is, it's just trends have always been my passion, it's, it's over three and a half decades, I love doing the research, weeding out the real from the fake, and, and, and uh, it's just a passion of mine. But my belief is, um, for safety, every person needs at least two passports. Now moving on to what the question, probably better formatted is, should I have a Dominican passport? And that's a completely different um, scenario. First and foremost, if you plan on living in the Dominican Republic now and working or owning a business or doing business of any type, I'm sure other than internet business, which is very hard to trace, you really need to be at least a temporary resident. You have to. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm not saying it's not done. All I'm saying is after 30 days on a tourist visa with no other documents, you are an illegal alien and you deal with it how you think is right. Okay, so I'm not, I'm, again, I'm, this is only information. You know, Barry's not here to say right or wrong because I know a lot of things that, a lot more than you might might know that go on, go around here after all the years I've been living here. But to do it legally. Now, think about another thing. If you really don't plan on working and you really don't plan maybe being full time, but you'd like to stay for maybe six months to a year at a time. Okay, let me just click onto another sheet here and get some information because really, is it worth the expense of getting a temporary, which has to be renewed every year, or a permanent, which still needs to be reviewed one year, then four, then you're eligible to step up, I believe. But you take a look at these fees and it's, it's rather costly. If you plan on setting up business structures and working and, and charging uh, money for services, yes, you're going to need it. If you're here visiting and you have a second property and you want to stay maybe up to a year at a time, well, I was scouting the internet here and through various sites, the closest thing I'm coming up with, and it has gone up substantially since a couple of years ago, but um, if you want to stay in this country for 9 to 12 months, the fine upon leaving is 5,000 Dominican pesos. That's $104 by February uh, February 5th, 2018 exchange. So 
Okay, under $105 US that you can stay here legally for up to 12 months, from 9 to 12 months. Hmm. Okay, to obtain that, all you really need to do is go on the internet and you can seek out many different uh, websites. You'll need double copies of the passport picture page and yada yada. It's, it's quite simple. It's nothing extravagant. You just go down to the immigration in, in uh, Santo Domingo and file for an extension on your tourist visa. You're legal, no problem. So I don't know what people make such a big deal uh, about it for. I think to remain in any country for up to a year for around $100, $105 is, is your total penalty. I think that's a bargain. So you might want to think of that. Do I really need the citizenship or residency or am I better just filing for an extension on my tourist visa.